previously in X-Men. Well, Wolverine and Kitty Pride, now Shadowcat, have returned to the team. Storm, powerless and seemingly without a purpose, has left. Just north of the border, our Canadian superhero friends have had a turbulent year. Their leader, Guardian, was killed, leaving a hole filled by his widow, Heather. Shaman's daughter discovered her magical purpose as talisman, and Aurora has transformed both her image and powers slightly away from her twin brother, Northstar. Definitely more personal stuff than superhero -y stuff. I am Jason Lapidus. I am Chris Hannigan. And we are a group of seven comics. Welcome to episode 116 of our ongoing Tuesday night live stream read through of the X Men comics that became classic as we read Uncanny X Men, or I should say X Men and Alpha Flight number one. And we continue our previously in X Men subseries, previously on X Men 97, as tonight we'll be breaking down episode four of the cartoon. And then, of course, we'll read through X-Men off Flight number one by Chris Claremont, Paul Smith, Bob Wyacek from December of 1985. Chris, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks, you know. Doing well. Uh, excited to dive into this one um, because Paul Smith, Paul Smith's the artist on this book. Yeah. And uh, we are we are fans and we we, we uh, to be able to just rediscover Smith a little bit through the X-Men run, the one... 60s, 170s, I think, somewhere in that yep. zone. Uh, so this is uh, this is gonna be fun, and of course, we're both big fans of the flight. So you know, so we have soft spot for both. So yes, definitely. So big fans of Paul Smith here in, in this house as well. We all love Paul Smith. I actually named my dog Paul Smith. But moving on, uh, when it comes to Alpha Flight, uh, I'm not shy. That Alpha Flight is the first superhero title I ever read. And then never collected. I picked up number 22, which is the worst issue of Alpha Flight of all time. I picked up issue 22 in a like grab bag at Chuck E. Cheese at a birthday party, uh, you know, in those mid 80s, mid to early 80s. And I was just totally enthralled by the artwork by John Byrne, not knowing that I wanted to, you know, draw comics. It was my. The second series I'd ever read, like I'd read, I've been reading G.I. Joe for a couple issues and then uh, picked up Alpha Flight and couldn't believe they were Canadians, you know, given that, you know, I, I was a Canadian kid and that, uh, yeah, the Canadian superhero thing. And it was a really strange subject matter. It was all about the FLQ crisis in the 1970s and uh, a circus fat lady had kind of come back to extort. Anyway, it was a whole big mess, but I was completely enthralled. I started collecting it, realizing I was also there one year after the, like their leader had been killed, who had just suddenly become my favorite character. Once I saw Guardian slash Vindicator slash Weapon Alpha, James McDonald Hudson, I was like, that's my favorite superhero. I loved his outfit, and I was like, he's already he's been dead for a year. So uh, it, that team was a hot mess, and I was in for the drama. And man, John Byrne's artwork just spoke to me. So when I saw... This on the rack at my at the convenience store beside my doctor's office. I was like, "Who are these X Men?" So this is my first X Men comic. It was that you know my boys Alpha Flight or my my team mostly girls, uh, but Alpha Flight. There you Your go. First X Men comic is this one. So uh, this is a uh, this is special in my heart. Um, I was struck right away by like the. The mixing of corner box things, like it was both the Alpha Flight corner box people mm. and the X Men corner box people. I couldn't believe that that was the thing. Oh, and yeah. uh, you know, again, cool. seeing John Byrne um, as part of it was uh, I found really exciting. Um, I showed this last week. Um, I wanted to remind you of this in case you didn't watch last week's episode. It's still very. Cool I didn't mean for it to come up right this second, but anyway, they also used the old logo. Um, on this as opposed to the the new Alpha Flight logo. So sure. by this point in time, Alpha Flight is it says it's it's you know how do they describe this? It is takes place before the events depicted in Alpha Flight number 25. Okay. So the cover of Alpha Flight 24 has a completely different logo. They've been using that logo for I don't know five or six issues. 
And uh, this is, I guess, the more graphic one that the editorial wanted to go with. But there are a few other weirdities to this. Do you, How well do you know your Alpha Flight continuity? Not very well. Okay. So, uh, in issue 23, Snowbird, like Walter Lankowski, the Sasquatch, loses control of the animal that he's tapping into. Right, this mm-hmm. uh, this beast that he's through gamma radiation, he has you know breached some barrier um, between the mystical realm and and his own body in our realm, and he can trigger a transformation between him and this other creature. Mm. We all thought it was like he's turning into this this he's gotten big, but they say it's so he's actually becoming this this beast from another realm, and he slowly loses control of it over many months of of comics. And by issue 23, he loses control completely and the beast takes over. And Snowbird transforms into a white version of him, a white version of that beast, since it is a northern Arctic Circle beast. Mm. She has the power to change in anything that's from the, the Arctic Circle. And uh, she turns into this white version and she rips his heart out. And then issue 24, double-sized issue, they go on a journey to the other realm to save Walter Lankowski's soul. Oh, okay. So not only is this before the events, of issue, the events of issue 25, this has got to be before the events of issue 23, because mm. that body is gone by then. So mm. I thought that was a weird like editorial hiccup. Mm. Um, but we'll get to I that. will take your word for it. <laughs> I also haven't read that comic or those comics in a really long time. Let's take a look at the chat. It's quite busy here, so we'll, we'll happily dive in and see who's there. Ali M is returning. She says, Happy Tuesday, third time of the charm. I'm finally here for the start of one of these. Hello, Ali. Thank you for being here. It's really nice to see you. Barry Mitchell says, Greetings, everyone. To you too, Barry. Greetings. Welcome here. Glad you're here. Welcome back, Chris. How are you doing, Jason? I'm doing great, man. Thank you, Barry. Appreciate that. Jason Jose says, hello. There's some nice chat between people. That's awesome. Howdy, ex-friends, says Chuck, all the way from Texas. How you doing, Chuck? Glad you're here, too. Chuck wishes you a welcome back as well, Chris. Thank you, good sir. (laughs) Cool story. Jason, first X-Men, right on. Yes. Weirdities. Did I say weirdities? You did. (laughs) You you Claremonted that word right out of, right into existence. <laughs> yeah, I think it totally makes sense. It's a oddities, you know, weird oddities or weird weirdities. It makes total sense. Um, I, last week when you were under the weather, and we're glad yeah. you're back, we were talking about in episode three of X Men ninety seven, where there were all these like Easter egg, like when when yes. they're in the astral plane, these memories go by. And yes. one of the memories is like this cover. Yes. And I I recognized it, you know, because I have one of those eyes sometimes for that kind of thing. But you and I are huge fans of Michael Cho. We are. Uh, you know, fellow Torontonian. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I thought that was a really, a really fun thing that. Uh, and then was... did you see he posted about it too? He went on. Oh, no, I didn't notice. Yeah, he actually went on and I saw his post on Instagram and said, oh, what a fun little like little uh, easter egg there i you know thanks for for putting that in there Fal. you know whatever but uh, yeah that was very cool that was very cool yeah i enjoyed i enjoyed that one a lot so do you want to go through x-men 97 episode four and then we'll dive into sure x-men and alpha flight number one by the way there are a lot of characters in x-men and alpha flight number one so many we're going to be <laughs> dividing up like a million and so one many. i'm looking forward to reading like the God of Gods characters as well. Oh, yeah, like English. those. Uh, yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, okay. So we can go through uh, X-Men 97 and talk about what happens there. Um, the Did you have any, like, first reactions you want to share or not? Or you're good to well, go? I thought it was, I mean, okay, well, a couple. Um, just one, I thought it was interesting that they basically, they, they told two stories, right? So that was, uh, that was interesting. Kind of reminded me of those those, those little those classic X Men that we ran that we uh, tech checked out earlier in our series where you had the story and this little bonus story, um, but I mean you know the second part, uh, you know, life death, uh, the story 
uh, which, which as we were following the series, we, we figured we were getting to, but that is the name of the comic that we did on this show, the Barry Windsor Smith issue uh, from only probably two months ago, maybe, uh, maybe three. Um, so to see that, to see that come to animation in about a nine to 11 minute animation bit crazy uh, with something else, something else. Yeah. So yeah, that's my, you know, that's my first take on it. Yeah. I hear you. Um, Austin Matthews just scored, by the way, he's 66th. What? <laughs> Sorry, folks. It's we're, we're having old. a historic hockey season here. So it's a little, it's a little uh, fascinating and distracting. Yeah, Most I was goals in the NHL in the in the I, they call it the what era the salary cap era. Is sure, that what they call it pretty the exciting stuff. Season. He just 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 destroyed Alexander Ovechkin's record. So and sure. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But it does so I, matter. I also yeah we're gonna like lose all the viewers as we start oh, talking I, hockey. I, it's I, okay. 100%. I also was really excited to see, uh, you know, this idea of, of having things from the comic book adapted uh, relatively it's, it's spiritually and faithfully yeah. in a spiritual sense. Like it captures the spirit of those those stories and, of course, a condensed version. So the episode <laughs> opens up with uh, the characters having coffee. There's like that awkward uh, Gambit, Rogue and Magneto scene with yeah. a bunch of uh, muffins in the morning and they're you know, what's in my coffee kind of thing as there's tension growing between Magneto mm -hmm. and, and Gambit around, uh, around everyone's favorite Southern Bell rogue. Um, it was fun being at an event on the weekend where people were talking about this and, and it's like, it's irking all those Gambit fans. There, <laughs> there are a lot of people who grew up in the nineties and like Gambit is their guy. Yeah. And rogue is their yeah. dream girl. And it's so cute that it's, it's a, uh, it's capturing people's imagination, so I'm really enjoying that. It's fun. Yeah. Fun. So the X-Men have to figure out, you know, uh, some some steps forward, and of course, you know, Jubilee makes a great entrance. In this episode, she was not my favorite version of Jubilee. Is she, She's backed a little bit of whining, mm -hmm. but I am uh, happy that she's getting some attention and, and getting mm -hmm. to have the focus, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and off she goes with Roberto up to her room. Complaining, you know, uh, it's her birthday. Kind of stuff. It's, it's her, her birthday. birthday. Her 18. Uh, yeah. So, why aren't you treating me like an adult? I can handle out. Yeah. Okay. You know, David Cutler's here, by the way. Greetings, Xy boys. He says, I don't, I don't, I don't like being called Xy boys. But anyway, I, I can take being uncomfortable. It's not, not too bad. It makes me uncomfortable, but in, in a fun way, not nothing bad. Um, are you digging the dynamic between Roberto and uh, and Jubilation Lee? I, I am just because it's a it's another relationship angle that isn't Scott, Gene, and Wolverine or yeah. Rogue and Gambit. It's a newer one. It's younger, so it's played yeah. it's played younger, which I and like maybe a bit more innocent and and that which I which I like um, for sure. Uh, and it's you know you're kind of we see a bit of so. You know, Roberto's sunspot uses his powers once. We see him kind of unload, unleash a bit, and you're kind of like, okay, so you're, there's gonna be that episode when he goes full, right? Whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited for that. Uh, Me too. And it was great, you know, Mojo. You know, I mean, I don't know. We, yeah, I'd get too far of ourselves, but you know. They, well, I was just gonna say before that they go yeah. into the Mojo verse, before they get pulled into the Motendo, like the Nintendo device that is, you know, Mojo, uh, he, he brings it to them in some, some way he brings them. Yeah. The Motendo, there is a long shot, uh, like stuffed animal, like a, a plush or whatever, long shot doll, um, <laughs> on Jubilee's dresser, which is kind of fun to see and in there in some form. So again, so in the episode where in the first, in the initial series where they do a Mojo world episode, they do a couple, but there's one where, Jubilee takes a real shine the long shot as like a crush. Right. right? So I guess that's probably what they're they're throwing in there, right? Well, he's supposed to be this like he is the movie action star heartthrob yeah. from this other dimension. Yeah. Um and it's kind of neat going to the other dimension sort of seeing what's there like Sentinels that sort of uh days of future past level. Mm. And then you realize pretty quickly that you're you know, we all know it's a video game. Obviously, there's they go to a Genosha space, which is like really a throwback to Genosha from the TV show from from mm -hmm. you know the original X Men series. 
Um, and there's a mysterious figure that I didn't know who it was at first. But it's that mm -hmm. spiked helmet, roller skate, or roller blade wearing, uh, you know, spiky figure. I wasn't sure who that was going to be. Uh, we all knew it was good. it was video game stuff, so it wasn't like yeah. a big surprise. So they reveal, you know, through the pixelation, it's like, oh, it's Mojo. That's really fun. Uh, he's lost all of his weight, which is gross. <laughs> he looks grosser. I think that was oh, great. Looks it's gross. so gross. And the um, the end, like the ahead. video game, the eight bit stuff for the sixteen bit, whatever it was, you know, I, if if you grew up in that era playing those video games, that was a real treat to see again. You know, Jason, you and I had a, an adventure in Whitby, Ontario, back in the fall, where we played the X Men arcade game, where you know they fight Magneto at the end, similar to the way it's positioned in this episode and we made it all the way we didn't win but it's fun like you know just the way the move and they they captured a love of that really well for sure for sure i love playing the game with you it was a ton of fun um jason jose says it's funny that it looks like a sega given that it's motendo yeah like why not throw yeah. in both reference to both systems david says he's going to retire it then ha 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 don't retire it make me like pu push those buttons with me i, I welcome um being make out of my comfort jason zone Hexy. <laughs> I welcome, you know, blushing and going out of my comfort zone. It's fine with me. I'm, uh, I can definitely handle it. I just won't pretend that I like it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Mojo is so gross. Skinny Mojo is grosser. Uh, oh. He is such an unappealing character. Oh, he's so gross. But then, yeah. he, but it, it shows, right? Like as, as the two progress through the levels, and I guess the. Uh, the reaction of the crowd like kind of uh energizes mojo or he draws energy from it or strength yeah. he gets bigger again um which is is kind of a neat thing but yeah definitely thin like hangy flesh mojo gross mojo Ugh. gross mojo. i really do like the idea that they had the 16-bit animation in here and i kind of wanted them to lean into it a little more to be honest mm. i um I remember when I saw Spider Verse, you know, into the Spider Verse the first time. Um, one of the, my thoughts was that, like, that you couldn't have gotten any more Spider Man into like Spider Man in every iteration into that movie. It was it was like the most Spider Man a thing could be, mm -hmm. and I love the idea that they're looking like the creators of the show are looking at X Men culture from that time period. It's like, what else can we cram into this show in some way to? just heighten the experience instead of just being a straight up narrative. Let's pull in every reference we can, like a real mm -hmm. love of it, of, uh, of the X-Men brand. And so I, I'm, I like it. And I'm a huge fan of community and there was a, an eight bit animation episode of community and it can work really well as a, as a story motif. So I was hoping mm -hmm. we were going to go full on community with this one and have the whole episode in that fashion. But I understand that it's not necessarily realistic. And then, then they go to the Savage land Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, no, it's on the really, levels, right? They do yep. have levels. Yeah, yeah. I love when it goes full screen and you get to see like the characters' icons as and their and their health status and all that kind of stuff, as well as the gameplay. Um, we get to see that Spiral is involved because mm -hmm. she, you know, is an agent of Mojo in the Mojoverse. Uh, so it's cool seeing her kind of doing something on the sidelines. We're not exactly sure what. And um, yeah, not the first time we see her in the show because I think is it right. episode three where, where Morph turns into Spiral? Yeah, he's like taking a vote, right? And he, yeah, he, all the hands. hands. Yeah. It's a fun gag. Uh, then they face Magneto, and he you know uses the lines from the show or sorry from the video game, and demonstrates that that you know magnetic orb that he flies in that force field, which is so cool. Yeah, uh, it's really uh, intimidating, which is great fun. And it's neat seeing all the sets just the way they are in the in the game as well. Totally. Um, and then I'm trying to think where then we get to go to the sort of the video game astral plane where she speaks to herself like in the, the world between worlds. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, reminds me of uh, Star Wars Rebels and Ahsoka, where they go to this realm between realms, and she meets her older self. I really do think I'm just joking here that this was inspired by the uh, DC movie The Flash. Where he gets to meet multiple Barry Allens, um, yeah, definitely a big inspiration for them. Uh, fun seeing like this older version of Jubilee. Yeah, but, I actually, did. but it, it's always I think it's always fun seeing like you know, imaginative versions of younger, older versions of the character. 
Yeah, one quick critique. Uh, of course, you can explain it away any way you like. Um, older Jubilee is mm, half a head taller than young Jubilee. Mm. Jubilee just turned 18. That's all I'm saying. She, she's not growing more. But, you know, okay, not not a big deal. Just a fun fun criticism I was watching, being like, yeah, that's that's a, another adult. That's a different dimension. That's a mm -hmm. alternate reality version as opposed to just her older. Not just simply time travel. Um, kind of fun to see the chains or whatever, different, different take on the outfit. And I found overall the story didn't do much for me. Um, it's just a story. Well, I think, so this is, we go back to the original, you know, we talked about, there's two stories in this episode. And right. one is, is, is fairly light and one is not. And so I don't think you can have, you know, I think that's probably intentional, but like just your like your story didn't do much more. But like, I think it's like, it's meant to be a light bit of fluff Definitely. Uh, so that they can have a bit more of a serious story with life death. I agree with you. And of course she gets her big kiss at the end, which is very sweet. Yeah. Happy with that. The life death stuff. I mean, it's so interesting to have read the comic and then, you know, just a few weeks back and now reading mm -hmm. this. And, uh, yeah, really cool. They're not in the, like, the penthouse tower in Dallas, no. the way they were in the comic. They were out in the wild, you yeah. know, in a wilderness space, which I think suits it really well. Mm -hmm. um, but he doesn't have the high-tech space that he has in the, in, the, in the comic, which is fine. It still works. And they have that meal, and she's wearing the white overalls. I know. I was like, wow, that was right out of the book. And uh, except in the book, she wasn't wearing a tank top underneath. And so I remember I was pretty worried about her chafing. But uh, sure, they, yeah. added, <laughs> they added the tank top here. And they go right to having like a heart-to-heart -heart conversation, which is nice. I kind of like the idea of them building up to it. But I understand this is a compressed storytelling form. So, mm -hmm. yeah. She is so striking on this show. Like They've drawn her so amazingly. Um, yeah, I think she looks great. I Oops. love the design. Yeah. The extra long mohawk. Omega level threat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she's figuring stuff out, going for a fly. She sees um, on his cork board, you know, an image of the X Factor team he was on featuring Madrox the Multiple Man. Shout outs to Jason Lowe. Um, strong guy, Wolf Spain. Polaris and Havoc. Yeah, from, from the animated series, right? Like that. Yeah, they had that appearance on there. And, you know, there are action figures for those who are interested of almost every ver no, every version that's there. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny that Quicksilver is the only one who doesn't have a unique costume for that team. Oh, X related. Yeah, it's still yeah, X he's Yeah, he's wearing yeah. the same costume, sort of, you know, that he's worn for at this point in time about 20 years. He's only kind of gone through two iterations. He's gone originally. He's green. They changed him to a light blue, and that, that's all that's really changed in his costume. But everyone else has a outfit that is unique to this moment in time. Which you know, okay, there you go. Some fun '90s stuff. Um, I'm trying to read his other things on the cork board to see if I get any other information out of it. Uh, but uh, not easy for me to do that. So I'll keep moving forward. And you know, he got him in his short shorts, which is. Again, right from the book. And um, doing that test on her, and she's unable to summon. Mm -hmm. She does a lot of, like, it's it's fun that she almost has to cast spells. Just, you know, to summon the weather. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, how you find it. I think it's that's just maybe one of the unique parts of the show, that this version of Storm um, really talks to the audience. Like, really spoon feeds when she's trying to use her powers. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I... My daughter and I have a laugh about it. It's one of our yeah. favorite things. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, there is an image of Forge with two other characters. I don't know who they are. And he's in his military uniform. Mm, okay. Um, I'm sure someone in the chat can tell us who they are. If this was a DC character, I'd be like, oh, it's it's Professor Two Omaros, or whatever his name is, Professor Moro. Um, it, just weird scientist looking dude, but I don't know who it is. And then 
uh, it comes out that she sees the restraining collar, the power dampener collar that he's playing with. And she realizes there's a connection between the device and that he played a role in her losing her powers, which I thought was, again, that, that good connection back to what happened in the comic, like that oh, betrayal, sure. you know? Yeah. It's she good. slaps them. It's great. She's like, yeah. Yeah. And, and, then, and then it takes a hold or it, it gets a bit more uh, comic booky, I guess. Um, in terms of uh, there's a threat, there's an antagonist, demon, something you don't quite know. Uh, Forge seems to see it, seems to know it from uh, having some connection to it. Right. And uh, yeah. Yeah, this is, you know, one of those things they do in comics where there's like a, an internal struggle that's happening and they just take that that struggle and manifest a, an entity that represents those things. Yeah. Um, yeah, very cool. Very cool. I'm just looking back at the chat and to see how much. There's a lot asked. in the chat tonight. My goodness. Um, going back. Toy Rensu, what's up, geeks? Hey, how you doing? Good to see you again, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, David says, I was surprised that they left the Master of Magnet and Welcome to Die references on the table. Uh, usually they'll go for all the winks and nods they can squeeze in. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Ali says, there's a comic store in South Street here in Philly that has that old arcade game. Sometimes I go in just to look at it. Play yeah, it! Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely if you have uh, a couple spare quarters. A couple it's a really fun one to play, around. or tokens, or whatever you need. We really had a great time. You, me, and uh, Jerome, Jerome out in Whippy. We loved playing that one. That was a uh, because we had because you get up to four, right? So we had three of the four characters. Yeah, we got to go it's back there with last. Yeah, with a couple couple extra people. That would be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Torrance who says, "Not gonna lie, I thought you two would have been the opposite heights in real in life. Not that you're short, Jason. I guess I wasn't expecting." Expecting Chris to be so tall. No, I'm not a tall guy at all, at all. You know, about five nine. And yeah. Chris, yeah, you're you're taller than me. Taller than Jason. Yeah, not not that's not a huge accomplishment. Uh, but I will say, for the record, I'm the tallest being my family has ever produced. Taller than my dad, taller than my mom, my older brother, everybody by a lot. So I did really well with the genetic material I had. <laughs> you, on the other hand, sir. Yeah. Are you as tall as your father? No, he's a bit taller See? than that. See? Fail. 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 There you go. Oh, the Matrix references with the phone booth. Yeah, Thank that was kind you. of fun. Yeah, that was Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, the older Jubilee, that's a fun callback. Is it? That's a mold. That is an older, that's a callback to a story. I don't know that one. Uh, the Solar Wolverine series, where I think the Kuberts uh, did the art. Okay. Oh, cool. I'm looking forward to that. And. Oh, voiced by the original Jubilee actress. That's cool. Very, very cool. That's cool. Yeah. Gary Shipman says, hey, all. How are you doing, Gary? And Oh, and, right. Go ahead. Minute. Sorry. Saying, and speaking of original voice actors, this weekend, this past weekend, Sunday, we had the pleasure of meeting Cal Dodd and hanging out with him, the voice of Wolverine from both the original animated series and the current Series yes. X and ninety seven, and so you know we were, we were at a toy show with Cal, and he was a special guest, and he was you know doing the lineup for people to get sign everything, everything claw related, Lego claws, actual claws, you know Funkos, whatever. Really great with his time. And at the end, we were tidying up, we were selling comics and hanging out, and then we just kind of walked, walked kind of went over and and introduced ourselves, and uh, you know said how much we appreciated his work and uh, what we do too, and, and shared a little bit about the show and. Uh, he was great, you know. For someone who, again, I don't, I don't know how many professional voice actors I've ever met or encountered. Can't really say, but I also wonder sometimes, you know, you'd probably say, "Hey, hey, give you the line, give you the line," you know what I mean? Right. And not that we even said that, but he would say lines unprompted from the series, and it was amazing. Yeah, he sure was like, going hey, to do it. Remember in season two? Like he would be like, "Remember that time where Wolverine's in the Arctic and he's sitting there?" We're like, "Yeah." <laughs> And then he, he would go into the line, um, unprompted. Anyway, great guy. What a, nice what a to talk treat. to him, for sure. What a treat to meet him and talk to him. Yeah. 
David says Bastion, the super sensual guy, is in the pink. There's a photograph on the board. Oh, the, the so floor. Bastion is there, yes. Good call. Good call. Um, the other guy, the scientist, is Mystique, the one she impersonated in season one, who they're implying used Forge's designs to build the power sapping callers. Nice. Nice. I, I dig all this. This is cool. This is cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah, Mao says one of the people in the photo is from the animated series episode where a scientist is making a cure. Yeah, good. You guys are sharp. That's uh, so why this is good. Trevor wants a shooter. Hey, do you guys see the Joker 2 trailer? No, no, it must have dropped tonight. I have not seen it yet. Uh, we will, we will take a look. Uh, I'll take a look. I'm probably on my own after. Uh, whatever you choose to do, Chris, you choose to do. And Mass, Massimo, how are you doing? He says, sure, people live longer. We shall see. We shall see. I've already got uh, five years on you, Chris. So as you long did. as as long as you don't go first, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Chuck Dotson says, "I hope Cal has adjusted to having seated being the voice of Wolverine for an entire generation." To Jason, he has. He was really gracious about it. Thank you. He for, was. Uh, for he had no it. problem with it whatsoever. <laughs> I did mention, and he understood that uh, I was thrown down the claw gauntlet. Mm -hmm. And he did not accept. He was, he was shaking in his his spandex boots. But no, he he was great. It was so much fun. And we did not perform any voices. It was we were we were just talk and talk. It was fun. Yeah. But he was um, he was sharing some interesting just even just general um, general stories about even uh, as he said re auditioning for the role of Wolverine. Yeah. Um, so a little bit of a, a behind the scenes piece there, but uh, I guess, you know, when, you know, we talked about the voice cast coming back and how those conversations took place. And uh, yeah, he mentioned that as well. He's like, Oh, when I re auditioned for the role, we're like re audition for the role. <laughs> Tell us more. Yeah. So, it must've been, uh, I guess that's the realities of, of the yeah, industry. I'm sure. Um, before we start into the comic, do you want to? Yes, I do. Crack a drink and you, you want to explain? Sure. Okay. So uh, we're just going to crack some cognac here, um, as one does on a Tuesday evening, because Jason and I, uh, when we were out in France at the Angoulême Comics Festival, uh, we got to, we were lucky enough to meet a local Angoulême-er, don't know if that's their name, but who was so kind enough as to gift us a bottle of local, moon, basically cognac moonshine. Uh, it was called Cognac Fermier. Uh, from this area in France. And uh, we we drank it with a number of Canadian creators and part of the of the of the, uh, the team that, the, that organized uh, our trip there. And it was amazing. And we are not cognac drinkers ourselves, but I think now we, we want to be. We want to be. You know, whiskey, scotch is sure, but never cognac. So now we came home and I saw Jason is in the recently celebrated another year around the sun. And so I said, Hey, here's some cognac for you. Here's some cognac for me. Let's drink it. And then we'll start our cognac journey together here in North America. So there's your story. So there you go. Or cheers, uh, pal. Cheers. You poured more than I did. Well, it's going to be a long night. Enjoy. Ooh, so. mm. And there you are. <laughs> sweet. Tastes cognac. Sweet. Cognac. Previously seen X-Men brought to you by the finest cognac you can buy. Anyway. Toy Rance says, how many different drinks does Jason have at his desk? Many. Great question. I'm rocking the coffee. It's decaf at this point in the night, but it's here. I have a glass of water with some lemon. And then the cognac. So three at the moment. I usually have two. Um, velvet jackets. Yeah, the velvet jackets are coming for the ne next episode. Thank you for the reminder. We'll have the embroidered X velvet jackets we'll, we'll get into. Yeah. All right, Chris. Let's do this. I'm pulling up the, uh, the comic. There we go. We get the double spread yeah. the wraparound cover of X-Men and Alpha Flight. Number one. Really uh, special to me, but I also see some weirdnesses in it. Uh, look how huge Colossus is and how tiny Rachel is on yeah. that cover. Like, yeah. Massive. But it's cool. But I, I like it too where, okay, so you're coming into this, maybe, maybe you're coming to this cold. 
Oh. Uh, obviously, this is your first comic. Um, but if you're familiar with Marvel and some of the stories, you're like, okay, I see Loki probably on the back. And I did not know of, who that was. Okay. And some kind of Asgardian thing going on. With... I did not know what that was. Okay, all right. That has, <laughs> that's what I was I thinking. had, at that point, I think I had no reference for Thor. And this gotcha. is also a new look Loki. This is like the Walt Simonson design. Okay. Um, so he's missing the horns and he has a uh, you know, different helmeted look. True. But, uh, like cosmic Asgardian. Yeah, I, I didn't know what to make of him, and um, I'll, I'll talk about that when we get to that page sure. or that double page spread where he's sort of introduced in this issue. Uh, I also wanted to throw in the black and white, the colorless art that Art Adams put together for the edition, I believe, that you're reading for the Asgardian Wars. This is often uh, part of a compilation with some other Art Adams annuals uh, for both uh, the X Men and New Mutants. So mm -hmm. there's a few different tangles they have with the Asgardians. And it's kind of a fun um, collection of, of a few different stories. So this is his artwork from that time period, from the mid-80s, mid to late. Wow. And it's like classic Art Adams throwing a bunch of characters of different sizes running at the camera, which it's just always amazing. Hey, um, so if you... Yeah, go at, ahead. Sorry. Underneath Loki's chin, I see Talisman... Is that Wolfsbane? Yes. Okay, thanks. And Nightcrawler. And beside Nightcrawler. Okay, cool. It looks better, I think, in a different context. Yeah. Um, she looks oh, a little... Like, you, oh, I see. Sarah, there are new mutants or cannonballs there. And, oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And look at the size difference between Sasquatch and Colossus. Oh, wait, Sasquatch is enormous. He's massive. Yeah, it's part of the fun. Um, in the original issue, the inside front cover is this. It's the oh, cool. cover advertisement for Heroes for Hope, which was the Marvel version. You know, We Are the World? Oh, we Are the World, yeah, sure. So they Marvel and DC did their We Are the World comics. And every creator participates in both. Like every page, every two pages is like a new creative team. So there are so many people. Like you get everybody. And uh, the DC one is just also has everybody and it's really really cool okay quick uh yeah quick bit of uh trivia uh canada's answer to where the world was called we aren't the world we're just canada no no, no. it wasn't no. called we aren't the world you don't know this do you know the song or the band oh my god the band uh, being I, a, a collective of famous canadians yes. in the 80s i know I, I remember it all yeah um i just try to block all that stuff out David like, Foster. Do you think wrote. about that? Yeah, of course he did. I have it on vinyl. <laughs> I had the 45. I bought it in Vancouver last summer. <laughs> it's by it's by the the collective is called T, uh, Northern Lights. Of course. I was going to say Northern Wind. <laughs> Northern Lights. Northern Lights. Yes, Chuck Brian Adams is part of it. The song's called Tears Are Not Enough. And they aren't. Okay. There you go. Trevor got it. <laughs> yep. Trev got it. Thank you. New Yorker Trev got it. Tears are not enough. Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, Brian Adams, Gordon Lightfoot, uh, Burton Cummings from the Guess Who, a number of great, great Canadian artists. Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Part one is called The Gift. Here, here goes that cognac. Here we go. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll start with. I guess this is Madeline Pryor, but I'll start with that. Is that okay? And you, you got Cyclops? Yeah, sure. Anchorage Center, this is North Star 340. Come in, please. Over. I say again, Anchorage, North Star 340. Do you read me? We get the usual credits. Nice team there. And Ascenti and Denny O'Neill are editors, which is at one shift. But same as usual, Tom Orzakowski and Clintus Oliver on letters and color, respectively. Uh, Paul Smith and Bob Wyacek are the two artists with Chris Claremont writing. And then it specifically says, yeah, it takes place before the events off flight 25. Mm -hmm. I would say it takes place before the events off flight 23. Oof. But I am not the editor. Um, but if you go and read issue 24 or 23, you'll see what I mean. Uh, what does, Chuck says, what does based on a premise buy? So, 
based on a premise by Jim Shooter and Nascenti and Denny O'Neill. That probably means that the editors were sitting around talking about how can we get another X-Men spinoff? How can we get X-Men and Alpha Flight? And they just say, okay, you know, Loki's going to mess around with something in the North and uh, we're going to get these two teams to go together. They just have a, you know, they talk over a drink at the bar and then assign that project to a team. The same as, oh, I don't want to get into the Roy Thomas Wolverine creation thing, but any any editor at any newspaper assigns a story and sometimes an angle to a reporter, you know? So Stan Lee, same at Marvel in the early days, could throw up premise at Jack Kirby or Ditko and they'd go create a whole thing. Then he takes all the credit. This time they're just getting their, their name in there, you know, getting a finger on it. Um, they're, they're not saying they're writers because they're getting enough paid enough as editors, but uh, this whole premise is not Chris Claremont's idea, I think is what they're getting at. But he is writing it. The aircraft is a Lockheed L-11 Hercules workhorse of the North Star Airways fleet. Able to carry virtually any cargo anywhere in any weather. Tonight, it's humping. <laughs> a mixed Canadian-American environmental survey team across Alaska to the remote wilderness above the Arctic Circle, if I had a dollar. Uh, yeah. I hate flying. Calm yourself, Cherie. It's only a little turbulence, Paul. Nothing to worry about. Famous last words. Ask our co-pilot, Scott Summers, then, if you are so afraid. He'll tell you rightly. We are safe as houses. That's a figure of speech I've never heard. Hmm. He and Captain Pryor have probably been flying this route for years. You've got to be kidding, Jean. I hate students older than him. Evening, Mr. Dominic, Dr. Kretchen. How are you both doing? Fine, fine. fine. Oh, oh, set, go ahead, again. sorry. Fine, yeah, yeah. fine, fine. I was, I was just telling Jian Jian here, Jian, Jian, how much I was enjoying the ride. Mountains and Bubby Air go together, I'm afraid, just so it isn't mountains and plains. For you, sir, we'll be extra careful. Shame on you, Paul. Where's your sense of adventure? Probably the same place you left your sense of self-preservation. You know the old saying, Scott, about geologists having rocks in their head? I rest my case. Looking at those two figures sitting, like seated there, mm -hmm. she is such a, like a naturalistic pose. Like, she looks like she's a real person. Mm -hmm. This does not look like a cartoon. It, it's it's so elegantly drawn. Uh, I missed his Scott Summers in a big way. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I really like and his Paul Smith Scott Summers. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I I think it's it's awesome. Really, really, really nice. It looks like it's from a photo reference. Yeah, she just looks like uh, a real... The way she's leaning in, mm -hmm. I think it, it looks really good. All right, Super sorry. Keep going, man. No comment, Mr. Dominic. Hey, what's this? Call me Paul. And I'm Gene. <laughs> <laughs> it's my sketchbook. I'm sort of a hybrid, you see. As much architect as engineer. I fill these pages with abstract forms, fantasies, whatever comes to mind. Crazy as it sounds, I've actually turned some of these Looney Tune doodles into real buildings. They're beautiful. Not really. Not compared to what they could be if our reality is bound by the laws of magic instead of science. You never know. True enough, the world is nothing if not full of surprises. Until then, it doesn't hurt to dream. By the way, Scott, how often have you flown this route? This is my first time. Why? Jean... You said? How are you doing, Mr. Discard? Descartes? Me? I wish we were already at camp. I'm bored, kiddo. I want to set up my botany lab and get to work. A few more hours should do the trick. Carla's the most sensible of this bunch. She sacked out right after takeoff. Probably asleep through the crash. Probably sleep through a crash landing. I hear... Mrs. Badonger is a hell of a heck of a cook. She ain't fancy, but for my money, she's pretty near the best. I tell you, Moreau, they're a menace. Who are Dr. Wilson? 
Beauty Summers. Je ne comprends pas, Boyd. I don't understand. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. My specialty is the relationship between predator species and man's the biggest predator of them all. Now in nature, only the fittest survive and the strong always dominate. These muties may look like us gentlemen, but they all have incredible, potentially deadly powers. What's to prevent them taking over? We're the competition, Jacques. We're the only real rivals. To survive, they've got to enslave us or wipe us out, unless we do it to them first. Makes sense. You bet it does. I'm a mutant, Wilson. If I took off these special ruby quartz glasses, my eyes would cut loose with an optic blast that could smash you to a pulp. Only as Cyclops, as an X-Man, I use them to defend humanity, to protect people like you. Moments like this, though, I wonder why I bothered. Howdy, fly boy. Come to see how the other half lives? Madeline wanted the cargo checked. We're heading to some rough, rough weather. Felt it. Everything's last tight as can be. Been listening to those two lumps a while. Wilson reminds me of when I was growing up in Chicago and the folk stories about their lives in Mississippi. Always seemed a lot easier to stir up that kind of fear and hatred than make it go away. Funny thing is, no matter how old or tough you get, how much you hear, how often you tell yourself it don't matter, you still take things personal. Words still hurt. Sometimes I wish I could make it all that just vanish. I know the feeling. You ever read an Ursula K. Le Guin novel, The Lathe of Heaven? It's about a fellow whose dreams alter reality. The other guy uses them, and the dreams try to abolish all the world's ills. Trouble is, the more good he does, the worse everything gets. Wishing's fine, son. But some things, the real important ones, I figured, have to be earned. Otherwise, they mean nothing. Sorry, you start me babbling about books. <laughs> I just won't quit. Load my, loadmaster ain't got much to do in the air, so I started passing the time with these. Trash books got real fast, real fast. But work like this, writers like Joyce, I could read forever. Oh, we got to switch the page. <laughs> Thanks, Boop. everybody, in the chat. Boop. Sorry. Radio drama now. Sorry, folks. <laughs> oh, dude. Pardon me. Usually Chris has control of that, so I don't have to yeah, do that. Yeah, that's on me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's on me. I'll be more mindful. Thanks, everybody. I even begun scribbling some of my own stuff. That sounds great. I'd like to see it sometime, if you don't mind. When I get done, you and the Skipper will be the first. I've been crewing with Madeline since she joined the outfit, and I ain't never seen her this happy. You're good for her, Scotty. Just what she needed. She's been the same for me. Sam, if Scott's with you, send him forward pronto. No contact with any station, boss. Dav comes out, Compass, Lauren, the works. A blind, deaf, dumb, and probably lost. Trouble? You might say that. I've never seen atmospherics like this. I have. Long before we met, the X-Men tangled with the Canadian super team, Alpha Flight. Their magician, Shaman, manipulated the polar weather to force our plane to Calgary, where they were waiting. It's the same kind of weird effect. <laughs> Look, he's playing with her hair. <laughs> In that panel, he's got his hand just stroking through her, the locks of her hair. It's so cute. That's like something probably not in the writing, you know what I mean? I love yeah. that. But well, why? What would the Alphans want to do which are, what would the offense want with you? Or a flight of government eggheads? They're freelance now. Who knows what's happened to them since their leader, Guardian's death. Maybe somebody wants this survey stopped? There are easier ways. Skipper! Fire number three engine! That tears it! Nick, broadcast a mayday. Scott, let's find a place to put this beast down. My eyes! That light! Madeline! 
a continent away in the town of Salem Center, roughly an hour's drive north of Manhattan. Douglas Ramsey is entertaining some friends. Could be Doug. Do you want to, sorry, what's that? I could be Doug. Okay, go ahead. Fair, sweet young things, flowers of American womanhood, shall you be the first to fall before the dreaded mutant menace? Doug, honestly, this is so gross. You do not fear me. Yeah, sure. Scared stiff, terrified. Marry me then, my darlings. No way, Jose. Don't even think about a blondie. I'm busy. It was nice of Kitty to let me read Aurora's letters from Africa. I really miss her. I hope she's happy there. Ramsey, you're pushing your luck. I'm a man who loves to live dangerously. You're a loony. Ha <laughs> ha, got you. Get lost. Whoops. Some menace. Alas, how the mighty have fallen. Does it Does hurt? It hurt? <laughs> agony, oh, agony. But a kiss will make me, hey. You're lucky you aren't some scummy mutie, Dougie boy. Or it'd be my duty as a real human being to rip you to pieces. So make like a tree and we get out of here, McFly. Put him down, Larry. When I'm finished. Now. Who's going to make me, Eliana? Hey, hey don't, don't look at me like that. I, I didn't mean anything. I'm cool. It's, it's cool. No, I'm done. I'm sorry, please. I, I'm sorry. Come on, let's get out of here. You're welcome, partner. I could have handled things. I didn't need your help. Silly me. Next time, I'll know better. And while you're at it, try remembering Professor Xavier's rules about flaunting our powers. How are we supposed to explain what you did to Larry? Tell them I used black magic. With Wait. that... Eliana manipulates, sorry, and Eliana manifests a stepping disc and teleports herself and Doug a few miles outside town to Char to Professor Charles Xavier's school for gifted youngsters. Did you want to say something, Chris? Yeah, or quickly, gonna... just because I wasn't here last week and I know you recapped issue three. So one thing I am really enjoying, or issue three, episode three, but I'm really into X-Men 97 is, you know, of course, because of the character of Morph, they get to throw in all these other characters for fun, visually. Right. Visu and in episode three, you saw both Ileana and is it Dark Child? Is her other? Yes. Is her other version, her evil version or whatever? Sure. So you get to see both. And that was that was kind of cool. I just as we as we see Ileana here, that was kind of a neat throw in there in in episode three. Right. Um, I found it really interesting as a as a coming back to this now after not reading this for you know a couple of decades yeah. probably seeing how many really good introductory pieces to the x-men lore are here right like you get a sense of the the politics of mutant versus regular citizen like what the temperature is in the community you know you can see that these teenagers are at the soda shop you know they're in this small kind of you know school town um and they go to this exclusive school just on the outskirts of this town and that you know they're isolated and and you know special like they're in part of that um mm. private school boarding school narrative you get to see the, the classic introduction to all x-men stories which is the danger room you get a display of everyone's powers and their personalities but this is like again my first intro to this unit of characters i had seen wolverine on tv so i kind of knew who he was a little bit um, and I'd seen Nightcrawler, but Rachel Rogue, uh, they're, they're completely new to me and, and Ileana, Doug Ramsey for sure. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was really fun kind of, uh, seeing these characters do some really classic X-Men stuff. Anyway, totally. let's continue here. Totally. It's a very exclusive Academy with very special students all of whom are mutants, born with extraordinary abilities that set them apart from the rest of humanity. Doug and Ileana are part of Xavier's novice class, while Ileana's roommate and best friend, Kitty Pride, belongs to the senior team, the X-Men. Training sequence program, guys. Hi, Ileana. Lockheed, that's my snack. Lay off, dragon. Aww. 
This is the danger room, wherein Xavier's pupils learn and hone the use of their powers as individuals and teams. Hello, buddy, ready? Show enough, sugar. Let's get this show on the road. Your wish is your wish, Rogue, is Mark Ryan. <laughs> Sorry, trying to do through a mic. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rachel, what is it, honey? Uh, I, Sci Flash, it. Ah! Cripes. Ray's lost control of her telekinetic talent. She's trashing my console. Oh, no. Sentinels. This isn't my scenario. Ray's changing the program. The room can create any environment, any situation, any threat imaginable. Some are sophisticated illusion, but others are real. The scene pulled from Rachel's memories is New York in the early 21st century, an alternate timeline where mutants are hunted down and slain on site, including her friends, sorry, including her family, including her friends, a fate she hopes will never come to pass. Yet fears cannot be changed. So this is my first uh, version of Rogue that I ever saw, and it's still the version I, I look to. It's like the leotard with mm -hmm. a few accented green pieces. Mm -hmm. um, Trevor thinks this is a great look for her, and I think it's probably because we're both coming from the same place in time. It, it, one thing this this final panel reminds me of a little bit, maybe it's because Colossus is armoring up upon sight and Sentinels, is you know there, there's a there's a trope I suppose in the X Men comics, and certainly it even shows up in, in the recent series um, episodes where you know they're always surrounded by Sentinels, and then they like they 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 power up as they're in a circle. Right. Um, and you know, you see it in, in days of future past the movie, you see that happen, which is kind of they go to each one and they each power up like in this rotating shot, which, which kind of looks kind of cool. Uh, and I, I do like that, you know, and you see it in the, in, I guess in episode one of the new series where the, the kind of broken sentinels all kind of rise up around, but like them always being encircled. And then it's always this like rotating shot of them, like getting ready to fight. I love, yeah. I am obsessed with power up scenes. I love them. Power I love scene. when characters have a little bit of a transformation when they go from right. their day to day to their superhero thing, whether it's totally. armoring up or right. transforming one element of their persona. I'm a huge fan. Right. I love that thing. Good work, Hound. You led us right to these muties. Now the robots will dispose of them. This is Ray's future, the alternate timeline where all mutants are outlaws. Wolverine, look at that girl. Is that Rachel? She helped the Fed slaughter her own kind? In our concern right now, darling. Colossus, fastball special. With awesome force, Peter Rasputin, Ileana's older brother, sends his teammate flying. Wolverine's unbreakable, razor keen adamantium claws extend from bionic housings built into his forearms and able to cut through virtually anything. This is awkward. Let yeah. me try that again. Hold on. Wolverine's unbreakable razor keen adamantium claws extended from his extended from bionic housings built into his forearms and able to cut through virtually anything, do the rest. And before the Sentinels can draw a beat on him, Nightcrawler, Aurora's replacement as team leader, teleports him out of harm's way. Yeah, all those clauses upon clauses within uh, you know these text mm -hmm. boxes. Sometimes it's hard to say uh, the rhythm correctly and like get the oh, get the pacing of it right. Completely. Chuck says, "I'll say it again. Nobody poses characters like Paul Smith. Just that this uh, grab of Wolverine hopping into Colossus' hand. You know, we've seen Colossus right. take him by the, the the waistband or like throw him by the bum or yep. whatever else, but like he's." about to like he's he's getting like a a spring coiling mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. and then he's you know unleashes in the next panel and no one would this angle to show colossus from is like you, you don't do this angle but man does it ever work because you feel that throw like oh, wolverine totally. getting that kind of height oh yeah it's he, he's been launched 
He's been yeah. Locked. So this, I mean, I'm sorry to dwell on it. This is my first fastball special, and I think it might be the best one. <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, fastball special is part of like the first thing I ever read, and I think it's kind of fun. Um, for me, it's just in com- completely formative in totally. what I expect X Men to be. But anyway, Jason Jose says, "Not to be weird, but I swear there had to be a mandate." On females having understated bus sizes, they certainly changed that in the '90s. Yeah, I think it also has to do with the artist, Jason. John Byrne goes a little further. Like he, his version of Storm is really busty. Um, back in the end of the '70s and into the '80s, and then Paul Smith does his characters much more live and and I would say a little more realistic. You know, like he's more interested in body movement as opposed to um, boob anatomy, you know, and, but the things, yeah, they get way out of control for sure. And these are also supposed to be sort of uh, younger women and they're not overtly sexualized. Like the Kitty Pride, Rachel, and Rogue are all not sexualized characters at this point from this artist. We saw John Romita Jr. He gets them in bikinis. Mm-hmm. And that might also be Claremont's writing. I don't know. But Paul Smith never really seemed to overtly sexualize the women. Uh, in your taste may vary. I don't think it's weird to talk about as as long as, you know, we're not getting out of control. I think it's okay for, for discussion from my point of view. All right. Nightcrawler teleports him out of harm's way. My armored body will shield Rachel from the robot's energy lash, but not for much longer. The safety systems are not working. These machines are trying their best to murder us. Ah! I should have watched where I was going. Big Tim bruises are popping out of the woodwork. I will catch you, Rogue. Petey, no, the fall won't hurt me none, but if my skin touches yours... And it does. And Rogue immediately absorbs her teammates' powers and psyche. Colossus drops to the floor, unconscious, human, and helpless. Chris, would you like to read this comment from David Cutler? Oh, yeah, sure. Paul Smith is interested in body moving, body, body moving, A1 sound, and it sounds so soothing. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I thought you'd appreciate that. I Meanwhile, appreciate <laughs> upstairs in his study, Xavier is working on academic lesson plans. That's code, by the way. When? Professor, help. A, kitty? I see the situation in your all your in all your minds, Shadow Cat. I'm phasing through the command console, sir, and thereby disrupting its circuitry, but it isn't having any effect. The computers, the systems, are completely under Rachel's control. I will deal with her. I will deal directly with her then, by interfacing my stronger telepathic talent with her own. I will restore sanity and calm to her mind. Poor child. Her life, this potential future, is the most terrible of nightmares. P- professor? So, do we know, do you go back to that page for one second? Sure, man. Because the image in the back, the 87. Yeah. Is that meant to be a reference to something? Yes, yeah, Sidney Crosby. Oh. It's a, uh, it's a Oh, prophetic. I see. The Sentinels all have, like, <laughs> numbers on them. Yeah, there's a huge legion of them, right? Like, they've taken over the world, essentially. Okay. And they control the United States, and, and they are, like, a military force. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Just having I didn't numbers. realize they had giant numbers on them. Okay. Yeah. I noticed it with maybe one or two of the earlier ones. I, the, right gotcha. there, like, number 35, I think I noticed, or whatever gotcha. he is. But, yeah, that's Crosby is that. It's Crosby. Uh, yeah. As a sentinel. I love the idea, like Xavier walking in and like putting his astral plane hands on her. I like that that drawing; it looks really cool. Yeah, we're getting some, <laughs> some hot Philly hockey takes in the chat. Hot Philly hockey takes. That would check out since Crosby is an evil robot. Yeah, that's great. Thank and you for that, Ali. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, I did not expect that. That's good. Way to go, Prof. The room's reverting to normal, and so's Rogue. Her power transfer must have worn off. Hey, Professor, how is Rachel? Better, Nightcrawler, though understandably a bit shaken. Shadowcat, 
I'm leaving her in telepathic charge of your computers for a few moments longer so that she can use the Danger Room's holographic projectors to show us what startled her so. A herky bird belonging to the outfit owned by Sykes' grandparents. The X-Men tangled with the Canadian super team, Alpha Flight. The magician Shaman manipulated the polar weather. It's the same kind of weird effect. My eyes! That light! Madeline! <laughs> Cyclops! Scott? Daddy? Man, it's dramatic. <laughs> David says, the goggles do nothing! Do nothing! <laughs> Chuck asks, wait, Colossus passes out, transforms into human form, wakes up and turns Transformers back outside of the pages? Why bother? Uh, yeah, good question. Chris, we're about to transition into Alpha Flight. Sure. Do you have characters from Alpha Flight you prefer to read or that you, that, like any leanings that you've got? You know, I don't actually... I mean, I mean, I have. I mean, I, I like, I like, I like the flight, but I don't, I don't think I have any that's particular. Uh, do you have a favorite out of the cast that's in this? Do you have any, any favorite characters at all? I mean, I, I could do. Uh, I, I always liked Heather. You know the, what? I, I can see why. I can see why Heather. she's, she's a great character. You know, um, happy to do. Well, you got it. What, what about you? Uh, I'm happy with all of them. I, I would say that the most boring one to read is probably. Uh, Walter Lankowski, um, right. but that might just be my bias. But and I do find just for comedy's sake, uh, a lot of Puck's affectations are misplaced. They're like at the wrong part of right. You know, of, yeah. But anyway, I'm I'm happy to just go with it. And wherever we land is wherever we land. It's going to be a mess of characters anyway. It's be so a mess of characters. nothing you can really do. But let's just let's just do this. Okay, uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. The medical center of the Sarsi Reservation, in which Dr. Michael T. Youngman is busy examining a fellow member of Alpha Flight. Breathe deeply, Walter. I'll be honest, Michael. I'd rather be anywhere but here. Trouble is, I've no one else to turn to. Lately, when I transform to Sasquatch, I feel less and less in control. More and more prone to Terrible, violent, berserker rages. Shaman, I'm scared. What's happening to me? I don't know yet, my friend. Get dressed. We'll talk in my office. Well, well Shepard. Shepard. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, you, you go. Because they were they're like yeah, each they, other. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. No, well, Sherry, alone at last. Aurora, what are you doing? What comes naturally, silly man. Oh, I don't know this word. Enquiet. What's enquiet? <laughs> I guess it's disturbed. To a enquiet, disturbed, and in pain. I can make that go away. I can make you happy for a time, if you let me. Physically, Walter Lankowski's in perfect health. There is no organic etiology for his condition. He's a biophysicist. He must have determined that for himself before he came to me, which leaves two alternatives. His problem is psychological in nature, or it is magical. Something must be done, and soon. He might easily, in a seizure, harm or slay an innocent, and given the increasing anti-mutant paranoia spreading north from the States. Things aren't good, are they, Michael? I can see it in your eyes. What's our next move, then? We'll talk with him, Heather. What's that? Good Lord. Snowbird. Maria. Shaman, my friend, save me. What has happened, child? On Gava Bay, the death of us all. Shaman. Michael. Oh. You attacked my father. I want to know why. I want him returned to me, unharmed. Because which doctor, if he's dead? 
energy cause such agony. Girl is mad. But who is she? Medicine pouch. Uh-uh, assassin. Assassin! <laughs> that bag contains your mystic arsenal. I'm not about to let you near it. Shaman, your pouch! It's pulling me inside! That cry. Shaman and Heather. Sounds like trouble. Oh, brother, I hate low ceilings. Careful, Sherry. We don't want to wreck Michael's hospital. I will reconnoiter. Stay here until I return. I'm trying not to make a great mess. Rogue, go after Rachel. Keep her from doing any harm. Too late, Rogue. And as for you, miss, you can't sneak up on a telepath or beat someone who reacts with the speed of thought. Une jeune fille. Interesting. I sense dichotomous opposing personalities within her. Let's see what happens when I switch dominance from the aggressive to the other. <gasps> Sacre mère! C'est impossible! C'est sorcerer! In mercy's name, girl, stop! You've got a lot of nerve asking that, shaman, after what you've done. No, oh no. Once more I find myself far from home, dressed as shameless trollop Aurora. Dear Lord in heaven, why do you torment me so? Will this madness never end? Will I ever will I never be at peace? Shaman, Sasquatch, Puck, help! There is like a lot of drama going on here. Holy oh, so gamboli. So much drama. Puck. That panicked, rapid-fire French means Aurora's reverted to Jean-Marie persona. And Heather's calling as well. We better get a wiggle on. Whoever's responsible will clean their clocks, eh? I can hear screams. Ray, how can you be so cruel? On the other hand, if it my daddy, would I be acting any differently? Better make my move. What's that? North Star. Jean-Paul Beaubier, speed demon of the North. I guess he figured out taking me out right off the bat, silly boy. I love Remember that, that? How it's going from super fast like into slowed down. Yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. But along with his powers, I've also absorbed his memories, every particle of his being. I know his joy, his pain, his dreams, and terrors, all his secrets. Do not look into the bag, Heather, or you risk losing both mind and soul. I can't pull free, Michael. Make it let me go. I'm through waiting, Shaman. I want answers. I have none. I have no idea who your father is, nor do I care. You've threatened and maimed and perhaps murdered for nothing. Playtime's over, girly. The kid gloves just came off. You hurt my lady. That makes me mad. If I were a wall, Furball, I'd be scared stiff. You think you're hot stuff? Come on, then. Take your best shot. My thanks, I call her, for a timely teleport. Rachel! Come with me onto the astral plane. Giving Rachel the opportunity to neither resist nor argue, Xavier literally yanks her psychic self out of her body. Un monstre ne poche mon pas, diable. Aurora. Do not call me that. Do not call me by that hateful name. Nightcrawler, grab my medicine bag. Michael, I can't feel my arm. How dare you act in such a fashion? You are an X-Man, Rachel. You have no right to tamper with another's mind, regardless of the provocation. Pull X-Men with all your might. I am. But it isn't budging. I'm free. And my hand's unharmed. Thank God. The, the pouch's, pouch's powers is... were momentarily neutralized. Hey, Pops. Isn't that what Talisman does best? Elizabeth. I heard your mystic SOS. And came as quick as I could. Do what you can for the other's daughter while I tend to Snowbird. She's barely breathing. Needs this here, Doctor? Thank you, Nightcrawler. This should restore her strength. 
and aid her body's struggle against the corruption consuming her. What could it be, though? I've never seen its like as a physician or medicine man. I will not tolerate such behavior, young lady, ever again. Yes, sir. Return to your body, then, and let us try to undo the harm you've done. This is Aurora, I think, same as? I think it's Snowbird, yeah? Yeah, sir, yeah. If it isn't too much trouble, would someone mind telling me what the heck is going on here? Let go of me, pig. You cannot hold me against my will. I want to go home at once. Allow me, Dr. Lankowski, to restore Miss Bobier to her former self. Aurora? We, oui, Walter. I'm myself again, as much as I can ever be. Who is that mad girl? Why did she attack? She mentioned her father. Rachel picked up a psychic cry from Cyclops, implying that you had ambushed him. And when the tale is fully told... That's nonsense. I was here with Heather the entire night. I cast no spells. I would never use my magics in such a manner against friends. Shaman, Cyclops' aircraft was struck down the same moment I was. There is a wrongness, a great and terrible evil emanating from Ungava Bay. Hmm. We've been charting a phenomenally powerful mutant presence, which also appeared in that vicinity last night. Three simultaneous incidents. A continent removed. Coincidence? In our line of work, Nightcrawler, I learned there ain't no such animal. Two heads, two teams. And they work better than one, Professor. What say we join forces? After all, there were Canadians in that plane, and it was hit flying over Canadian airspace. That makes it Alpha Flight's business. I also figure you owe me for this little set, too. Sounds pretty fair to me, darling. Hey, sure, why not? The more the merrier. But our Blackbird isn't big enough for so many people. Leave that to Puck, girl, eh? Eugene Milton Judd will take care of everything. There's like a lot that happened on that two page spread. Oh, there's a lot that's happening in this <laughs> story. <laughs> that the nightcrawler pulling the bag off the hand. Yeah. It's, it's so lively. Oh. Um, I do think that we did misattribute one of the lines to Snowbird that was probably Heather's. But that's okay. the letterer just taking three like the arrow points right down to her. Yeah, tell me um, what's going on here. Yeah, yeah I think that's Heather, especially considering how weak Snowbird is supposed to be. Totally. Yeah, there's so much going on. There's so much going on. I love to see the chat too, people. Keep it up. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, David says that yeah, that rogue a North Star flying panel is hashtag dope. It re it really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could you could say that Rogue finds out, you know, that, that he's gay. Sure. Um yeah. Claremont I'm I'm assuming Claremont knows because Byrne, I think, had that in in the in mind since the beginning. Um, so where was Wolverine? He's shy or something? I think they were all coming from the airplane. They had like they were landing the Blackbird as opposed to jumping out of the Blackbird in mid-flight. Mm -hmm. So the only X-Men that could get there right away uh, were Nightcrawler and uh, Professor X. Because mm -hmm. they teleported in. The rest landed, and then Rogue. The rest landed the ship and then came a-running. Um, and you could see a rogue is coming carrying a North Star. The other ones are just running from whatever field they landed in. But yeah, he's being a little over his thing back a little bit. Um, he has seen Heather since Mac dies in issue 12, right? We're up to like basically yeah. issue 24 in, in a flight that's been a year. But Wolverine goes to visit her in issue 17, at the end of issue 16 into 17. And then he retells the story of the time, first time that. Um, Mac goes to retrieve Wolverine from the X-Men in X-Men 109. He re retells it in issue 17 of Alpha Flight mm -hmm. with some additional scenes, which we talked about here we did. on one of our earlier episodes. 
And this is the the two page spread sort of thing that, as a kid, I don't know if I ever read it. I, I think the concept was a little too too much for me then, but right, it's kind of neat. And I love that drawing of these god gods. God gods. They look so cool. They look so cool. Elsewhere, in a place that is as much apart from the worlds of gods and mortals as it is a part of them. Because that makes sense. <laughs> if gods can be said to have gods themselves, this is where they live. And it is here Loki of Asgard, god of mischief, adopted son of all father Odin, has come seeking a prize beyond price. We see thee, Loki. And by that seeing, Prince of Asgard, do admit thee to our presence. We who sit above in shadow bid thee welcome. My noble task is complete, no, sorry, my task is complete, noble lords and ladies. My part of our bargain fulfilled. The time hath come for thee to honor thine. Not so, not yet. We charge thee not simply to do a good deed for the people of Midgard, but in the process to prove thyself worthy of our favor. The one is easy, the other far less so, as thou art discovery. The boon asked of us by thee is great and supremely precious. We do not grant it lightly. I am the son of Odin. It is not my nature to ask for anything. Be that not the point of this entire exercise, little god, to prove that nature can be changed. As we recall, thy half-brother Thor, god of thunder, had to learn the true humility that must, needs, temper, such awesome power as we immortals possess. Mayhap, this is thy turn. Some might say that a bona fide savior of the universe, who stood by Odin's right hand when the Allfather faced the demon Surtur, might have little to be humble about. True. Were there a great deal? Be patient, Loki. Thou shalt hear our judgment anon. Once, not long ago, I'd have chaffed at such treat or chafed at such treatment. I would have raged, threatened, schemed, fought, and thereby lost all. But I am not the god I was. I will remain master of myself and my emotions, behave as nobly as my doltish brother thereby accomplish what is beyond even his might. Loki, the trickster, the deceiver, the so-called god of evil, shall bring everlasting peace to the earth. Hmm. Mm. I wonder what he's going to do. Save the better... The day. Yeah, save the day. We'll see. The better part of a day later, and 1,500 miles to the northeast. Mein Gott, Herr Judd, this case is older than I am. Vintage Nightcrawler, eh? She may not be pretty, but she knows her way around the bush country. Speaking of which. you Okay, anyway. A de Havilland Otter will take just about any pounding. Speaking of. Okay. Stop it. Uh, fly on pretty much forever and land on the prover on a proverbial dime. What more could you ask for, eh? I won't ask where or how you got this. Good. Hey, fun fact, by the way. Uh, De Havilland airplanes were built in Toronto at the Downsview Airport. Um, if you're familiar with the area of Toronto, there you are. Yeah, that's where that I saw... Uh, Sam Roberts, Justin Timberlake, right. Guess Who, ACDC, right. and the Rolling Stones. That's right. Also the site of the de Havilland Aircraft Factory and the Avril Arrow as well in the 1950s. Anyway, wow. all this there. They are approaching Upper Seal Lake. 
Figure roughly 300 kilometers to Angava Bay. Flak another hour. I'll tell the others. They'll be so pleased. Never fear, Fra Hudson. The fun and games will begin soon enough. Pal, if this is as lively as, lively as this caper gets, I'll be eternally grateful. Michael? Both medicines and magics are having less and less effect. Narya may see tomorrow's sunrise, but unless the gods have mercy on their daughter, it will be her last. I hate it. Unable to help, unable to do anything but watch. I'm a normal human being, an ordinary woman. What right do I even have to be here? Much less lead, obviously. Sorry about the cramped quarters, fellas. But it won't be for much longer. While I'm up, can I bring anyone anything? A dagger, Heather, to thrust through that red-headed mind which is hard. I tried to explain what happened and why. Je comprends, mon petit chou. I understand. But I do not forgive. Aurora is, uh, isn't bothering to hide her thoughts. She's so close. Her emotions are so strong and violent. I can't scream them out. Serves me right, I guess. No argument there, Ray. <laughs> but Aurora's overreacting. Somehow you two have got to make peace between yourselves. Our lives may depend on it. Lockheed, relax. This is none of your business. So keep your nose out of it. I'm sorry, Mrs. Hudson. If I could take back what I did. Don't we all wish that? If I hadn't distracted Mac for that crucial split second in New York, I wouldn't be a widow. Oof. Oof. That's, that's <laughs> some heavy... Yeah. That's a heavy burden there, friend. Jeez, I can say. Split second. You know when you... Did you hate distracting people for a split second and then people explode? We certainly are a band of happy warriors. You don't need a villain to fight Logan. We'll gladly tear ourselves to pieces. After what's happened, you're surprised? There's never been any love lost between these two outfits. Want a coffee, Heather? Or something stronger? You look like you could use it. No. Thank you, Logan. Hey, before you turn the page on this one, a couple of things. Love Nightcrawler's outfit. Where's the where's the Marvel <laughs> legend? Where's the Marvel legend of that? Okay. And yeah. also the cap he's wearing. Is that the so it reminds me with the Falcon logo, a little bit like the Blackhawks. Sure. DC, right? But yeah. um, and I don't know if that's to have, I don't think that's to have ones, if I remember correctly. But anyway, maybe it's a deep cut. Maybe it's a deep cut. But, Maybe. Yeah, he he is like an Errol Flynn pilot. Yeah. You know, yeah. like he's yeah, I wonder totally. what that's about. Totally. I also would love it if the next Wolverine figure when they finally when they make the next like a brown and tan suited Wolverine yeah. like Marvel Legend pinless. Like this suit, I hope he comes with a flask. A flask. Yeah, a flask. <laughs> I, I see David is 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 with me. He wants a pilot nightcrawler Marvel Legends figure. Yeah, he seems. It, I feel like there are a few times where uh, he dresses up a little bit, one way or the other. Like, yes, really yeah, well, yeah. He he has a little more fun. Uh, what a great moment of how they're pulling her glasses down. Yeah, just that's where the where you know in in comics like this, the penciler is also. He's not just writing. Okay, he's he's not writing the script, obviously, but he's doing the acting, like the gestures that people have, you know, and their and their the emotions that come out of their body language and face. Um, he's able to do that. Like you can even see the way she's leaning against the cabin door in the bottom of the left hand side. Like mm -hmm. she's she's tired. She's tired. She's done. You can see it in her just the way she stands. Or like taking a beat as she before she goes down the aisle. Um, he's really amazing at the at the characters' body movements and their gestures. It's it's great. Wolverine leaning in. Hey, you need someone stronger. He's he's just great. Oh yeah. Yeah, Toy Renzu adds there is a leak for pinless Marvel Legends astonishing X Men Wolverine. Yeah, that blue is awfully bright, but uh, I'm looking forward to any any version of a Wolverine pinless. I'm usually game for. Big fan. Looking forward to that one. Totally. There she is without the glasses. Anyone who's ever worn glasses knows the feeling. Like when you have that headache, it's 
behind the eyes. You take oh, yeah. your glasses off. Like it's uh, it's it's like a go to move from so many people. I've tried so hard to hold things together since Mac died. Sometimes I think I'm doing an okay job. Sometimes even great. But others. You know, Mac always intended you to lead Alpha. I got other responsibilities, Heather. Duty, obligations, Giri. That's what they call in Japan. To both the X Men and another that's as important to me as Mac was to you. I give Charlie a hard time to keep him honest, but the X Men are my home, my family. I won't walk out on him. We were family once. You still are. But the rest of the Alphans are only friends. It's a big difference. Puck speaks the same way about Alpha. He has a lot more faith in me than I do. He's got good instincts, darling. Trust him. Watch the mouth, bub. <laughs> you ain't that flaming tall. It's Norstar I worry most about. Logan, there's so much anguish and rage inside him, and he won't share it with anyone. He's so afraid of being vulnerable and hurt. I'm surprised he agreed to join this mission. You know he quit the team? He's gone to head a scout. I hope he'll be all right. Not to worry, Rogue. Sorry, not to worry. Rogue tagged along. She did what? Jean-Paul teamed with a woman, especially her? Logan, they'll kill each other. Maybe. Maybe not. Now, Heather doesn't really know Rogue at all. No. So no. I wonder if she, what she's reading into her, like what she, what Heather is projecting onto Rogue as a person. You know, is it the, maybe she just knows her file, her power set? Or her... Criminal. Her pat right the right yeah the criminal I past right yeah find anything I could try doing more star too if you want sure you were doing it before but whatever you want to do is fine with me okay there we go back and forth you go find anything no go back to the others I need no help goodness gracious me and I thought I had a chip on my shoulder. By the way, sugar, we speak French ourselves in the Mississippi Bayou country. Can't crowd me up that way. You don't know what you're talking about. No? You forget, mon brave. For a minute there back at the hospital, I was you. Every thought, every experience, every emotion, every memory. It was quite an experience. You had no right. I had no choice. I can't control my power. I touched someone. There's that. It's been that way since I was a kid, and it will probably remain so till I die. So don't quote me no chapter and verse about how tough and lonely life is, Mr. Jean-Paul Beauvier. I'm writing my own book. You got no call for such anger, no star. You got talent, skills. You're a champion. I'm a mutant. Without super speed, I am nothing. I have nothing. That's funny. Without mine, I'd be everything. Oh, no star? Rogue, where did you get this? Other side of those mountains. There's a whole field along the bay. Why? This is, gra this is summer grass, prairie stock. It does not grow north of the tree line, especially not in midwinter. This weather is too harsh. Stay here. I will bring the others. What am I doing? Why didn't I simply return home? There's no place for me in Alpha Flight or by my sister's side. Aurora cares nothing for me. She ignores me whenever we're together. She has even changed her costume so we're as little alike as possible, despite the fact we're twins. It is the same in life, then, as in physics. Opposites attract, like repels. I wonder if it's supposed to be like rebels right because there is like a little bit of a nub on the p mm -hmm. Maybe. but i mean 
Anyway. For what it's worth, Ace, our radio's picking up nothing but static. I can't raise anyone. We're cut off. It's not a surprise, but it's just another indication we're on the right track. Nightcrawler, Puck, Snowbird's getting worse. I can't treat her properly in the air. We, we have to land. You think it's Puck talking? Sure. That field where Rogue's standing appears to, appears flat and firm enough. Fasten your seatbelts, everyone, just in case. I told you to wait on the ridge. I'm a grown woman, Jean-Paul. Would you like that epitaph carved on your tombstone? I can take care of myself, thank you very much. I'm flattered you care. I figured, though, since I'm pretty much invulnerable, I'd give the opposition an easy target and see if they'd take a shot. You are mad. Takes one to know one, sugar. Hey, y'all, what do you think of the view over yonder? Ungla Beach? Maybe, maybe Kitty? Oh, I was just taking a look at the view. That's wild. Yeah. Um, Chuck asks, so I've never quite understood what color is North Star slash Aurora's hair? I would say the shiniest of shiny black. Yeah. Um, once in a while it gets misattributed as white, um, but it's really black hair. Never with a blue highlight, never with a brown highlight. Just uh, like, yeah, really shocking black. If, like very, very reflective. At least that's how I've read it. Yeah. So who do you think this is? Yeah, good question. Kitty, it's it's childlike, so Kitty yeah, seems good. So, wow, oh wow. Feel the breeze. We saw a blizzard building beyond those mountains, but the air here is warm. Smell those wildflowers. It's like summer. Fairy tale weather for a storybook ending or storybook setting. Any moment now, we'll meet a knight in shining armor. I have no idea who's talking, but no. I don't really think it matters. Um, just crazy, crazy design. A little Cockrum-esque, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Playful. I believe Mrs. I guess that was Heather talking. Sure. Sure. That's right. I believe, Mrs. Hudson, you would have built to get your wish. Can you mind scan him, Professor? What do your senses tell you, Wolverine? Is he hostile? Nope. Anything but. You don't know how glad I am to hear that, Wolverine. X-Men and Alphans, welcome to paradise. Scott! I almost don't believe. I almost didn't believe my mind when I sensed your thoughts. Lad, your eyes. Completely cured, Professor. My optic blasts work like they're supposed to, at my mental direction, and only then. I'll never need my ruby quartz glasses or my visor again. That's wonderful, but how? Oh, just your basic, everyday, out-of-the-blue, garden-variety miracle. Step forward, Rachel. Say something. Hi, I'm Rachel, your daughter, from another timeline. What I want to do more than anything, except run away and hide. I should be happy. My side flash was wrong. He's whole and unharmed. But I'm crying inside because I can't stop rem remembering the moment he, the Scott Summers who was my dad, died. Poor Rachel. She looks so sad. This must be awful for her. Introductions are quickly made and... We were wondering when someone would show up. We figured it'd be either the X-Men or Alpha Flight. There's a pretty fair betting pool about which team would arrive first. Trust you guys to do it together. Professor, who's the shy redhead? Something about her seems strangely familiar. Professor, please don't tell him. X-Men, keep my secret. Cyclops mustn't find out who I am until I tell him. A new student, Scott. A telepath. Her training is at a crucial stage. That's why she's with me instead of back home studying with the new mutants. She has no code identity as yet. Her name is Rachel. 
Pleased to meet you, Rachel. I'm sure you all have questions. A few. You can't hide forever, Ray. I may try. Kitty, I've never been so scared. What am I going to do? I sensed your crash. Well, the psychic rapport I established when you originally joined the school... I'm oh, sorry, through the psychic rapport I established when you originally joined the school. You were in agony, Scott. Your body sheathed in flames. I got better. Chuck says, Savage Land North. Peter's about <laughs> double up with another couple chicks. Yeah, watch out, watch out, watch out. He's in his element. David says their coloring was white for their hair for most of the 90s and a lot of the 2000s. But it was black before and after that. <laughs> oh my god. What a cut. David, you're killing me here. The weather here is beautiful and warm. The air smells like flowers. My feet are bigger than Rita Hayworth's. Uh, some Joel Plaskett there. Holy smokes. That's that's a deep cut. Um, yes, I have questions about that cape. <laughs> <laughs> sure. It's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome cape. Scott, how heavy is that diaper? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's full. It's full. A very Walt Simonson cape. Agreed. As Guardian Chic. Yeah, you want to see some of this Guardian Chic? Check this out. Boom! Boom. I would appreciate a more appropriate response, Cyclops. I know, sir. It's just I still have a hard time believing this is actually happening. That isn't some dream. It really is almost too good to be true. Interesting. Some element... And the fabric of the citadel inhibits my psychic abilities, my psionic abilities, reflecting my probes back at me. Scott's thoughts have become more difficult to read as well. I wonder, is that cause for alarm? Words aren't quite sufficient for an explanation, Professor. It's easier by far to show you. Bum, bum. Bum. Welcome, dear friends, to what we hope and pray is the shape of our world to come. An earth wherein, whereon its children, human and mutant both, will live together forever in peace. Look at these people. Cosmic. Strange yet familiar. Strange yet familiar. That is some Asgardian chic right there, people. Madeline! <laughs> You've changed. I hope in soul as much as body, Professor. Scott wasn't joking when he called this a miracle. We've been blessed with gifts too magnificent to describe. What, what, what do you mean? I, I don't understand. Allow me to demonstrate. Puck... Dwarfism is a disease, and in your case, a terrible curse. How, how can she know? As anodyne, I can heal both, if you'll but take my hand. Be brave, my friend, be strong, trust in me as in yourself, and all will be well. Can I believe her? Can she cancel the pain inside me and set me free? Got to let her try. We're burning together, but the flames don't hurt. No, no, by heaven. It's me that doesn't hurt. For the first time in decades, the pain is gone. W whoa! Good lord. Eugene? Judd? Not too shabby, eh? I always wanted to look you straight in the eye, Heather. Never figured I'd get the chance. Whoa! Careful. It's been so long. I'm not used to my center of gravity being so high. Timber. I have you, Heather. 
I'm afraid, Puck, your next few days will be something of an ordeal, while your body accustoms itself to its new dimensions. A small price, Mrs. Summers. I don't know how I'll ever repay you. Seeing you walk again, hearing your laughter, is thanks enough. Chuck asks, so does Rachel know Madeline Pryor's story? Uh, I think she knows that there is a Madeline Pryor, like that, that he's married, not to Jean. You know, mm -hmm. I think they got a phone call back when. So I think she knows that her destiny, like her, the inevitable, uh, you know, birth of Rachel might be from an alternate timeline. I think she knows it's, it's in jeopardy, but she doesn't know Madeline's backstory because Chris Claremont, I would argue, doesn't know Madeline's backstory either. Right. If Scott was healed in a similar manner, then what I saw in my sci flash and all the grief I caused, such recriminations are needless, Rachel. How could any of us have suspected the truth? I sense great pain in many of you, a wrongness of body and spirit that I will be more than happy to excise. Uh, Anodyne, I could use your help. It's yours, Sasquatch. Cherie, comment ça va? How do you feel? Hey, babe, why don't you find out for yourself? Walter, no! What are you doing? Are you mad? Put me down, I... 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 Monstre! Livre ma soeur! He's off, Johnny. Look at her, Jean-Paul. Look at them both. They're neither of them hurting. They're happy as clams. Madeline's trying to do them some good, hotshot. You really want to stop that? Well? You heard the man, babe. What's the verdict? Are you Aurora or Jean-Marie? Je suis Jean-Marie. Who is Aurora? Who is Jean-Marie? Oh, Walter, the madness is gone for the first time. Since I was in Petit jean -Fille, I feel whole. Et tu mon coeur? I feel great. Could such a wondrous talent aid Narya, Snowbird? She didn't come with us. Why didn't I notice? How could I have been so careless? Jean-Marie, yo, babe, what goes up supposed to come down? Yo, babe. <laughs> says the professor yeah yo babe ever since we arrived I felt dazed and a fraction out of focus as if my spirit had wandered away from my body why is that and will it get worse my friend something has happened to Snowbird she must still be in the plane My age must be catching up with me. I have failed Narya so, as both physician and friend. The aircraft is empty, Shaman. There's no sign of Snowbird anywhere near it. I'll find her. I'm a pathfinder, Wolverine. And Boyd Wilson has dominion over the animal kingdom. He can use local animals for our scouts. We'd like to come along. After all, after all it's because of us you people came up here. We feel responsible. And three of us can cover a lot more ground a lot faster than a loner. Okay, just joking here with this pronunciation, so go with me. Suit yourself, Roger Guise. <laughs> do, do you know that reference? No, tell me. Oh, man. Uh, anyone in the chat ever used to watch WKRP in Cincinnati back in the day? <laughs> there was th this episode where the newscaster, Les Nesman, had to read the sports. And he referenced a golfer, of course, named Chichi Rodriguez. Yeah. And he called him Chai Chai Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just stayed with me. I can't give or get past. I mean, it's been 40 years. It's a pretty good thing. Chai Chai Rodriguez. Suit yeah. yourself, Rodriguez. Daria sent is almost non existent, as if she was deliberately masking her trail. She doesn't want us to find her. What gives? Meanwhile, within the Citadel... 
Carla Ballinger's our cornucopia. You've heard a thing for this feast. Oh, you poor dears must be famished for such a long flight. Please, dig in. Eat your fill. There's plenty for everyone. Fascinating. Each member of Madeline's party has been raised to their ultimate human potential. They have become true homo sapiens superior. Oops. Wait a moment, youngsters. I don't serve ragamuffins at my table. Especially when my talent extends to providing clothes as well as food. Cute outfit, Peter. It suits you. I wonder, can Miss Ballinger conjure up enough to single-handedly in famine and want? Wouldn't that be something? The kitty it would. That is a dream worth dying for. Excuse me, Madeline. Look, y'all know I got no control of my power. I don't know if that qualifies as a sickness or anything. It costs nothing to try, Rogue. Join us on our couch made of furs. <laughs> With this <laughs> giant red-headed woman. <laughs> I ain't never been so nervous. I don't know which be worse, success or failure. I don't feel any different. You need a guinea pig, Rogue. I volunteer. Jean-Paul scared stiff. He hates the idea of making himself so open and vulnerable. I ain't stopping him. Boy's got guts. No, nothing's happening. I'm touching him, and nothing's happening. <laughs> what a drawing. Wow. <laughs> it's so good. Paul it Smith is, is so good. Mm-hmm. This is all very impressive, but you are but you still suspect it's too good to be true, yes, Professor? What is the generous, what is the genesis of these various abilities? That answer's easy. We'll show it to you after dinner, but as to where it came from, our guess is as good as yours. The power isn't evil, sir, or hostile. If you want proof, you're welcome to probe my mind, and Madeline's as well. Thank you, lad. There's no hint of outside influence or control. Their thoughts are wholly their own. And so far as they know, they've told us the truth. The question remains, unfortunately, how much do they know? Hmm? Is something wrong, Professor? You look surprised. Small wonder, Cyclops, when I scan for two minds and find three. What are you talking about? What's going on? Madeline, that's great. You're going to have a baby. But is the girl that grew up to be me? Oh, drama. Well, why didn't you tell me? I wasn't sure until my transformation to anodyne. And then I decided to wait until Professor X spoiled it. Uh, yeah. And then I, I decided to wait until my healing powers made certain he wasn't affected by it. Congratulations, hero. Your son's going to be perfect. <laughs> Son? A boy? But I was first born an only child. It means whatever happens, I'll never be. In this timeline, this era, this reality, Rachel Summers will never, can never exist. Rachel? What the? Shadowcat, follow her. On my way, Professor. I can guess why Ray's so upset. I wish I knew how to help her. Talisman, go with Shadowcat. Why, Dad? What's it to do with us? Firstly, Elizabeth, whatever you think of the X-Men, they are our teammates, and we often look after our own. More importantly, we still know too little about this place. Despite Cyclops' assurances, I'm far from satisfied. This is a splendid opportunity to learn. I'm gone, Pop. And I don't really mind much. As an archaeologist, I've been hoping a chance to do some exploring. You needn't worry, Professor. 
I built this citadel. It's perfectly safe. There's nothing in it that can hurt anyone. You see, Professor, Carla can feed the world. Paul, how's it? There's no limit to the good we can do. And your gift, Mr. Ross? I'm sort of a living library. Through me, the knowledge of the ages. Every book ever written, every story ever told, is yours for the asking. At the moment, I've but a single question. And here, sir, as I pro oh, maybe it's Cyclops, actually. Yeah, and here, sir, as I promised, is the answer. We call it our magic fountain. It reaches from the roof of the sky to the heart of the world. The light appeared from nowhere, you see, and changed us. It was the violence of that sudden initial manifestation of our powers that trashed the plane. Turn the page. Sorry, Jim. Jeez. Oh, it's okay. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I've never beheld so wondrous, so beautiful a sight. X-Men, look. There's someone out on the ramp. That... Heather. What are you doing, woman? Where are you going? Can you hear, Jean-Paul? The light. It's singing, calling to me. I am taking you away. You will not. Heather, do not do this thing. I beg you. Why, North Star? I didn't know you cared. See you later. She'll be fine. I hear no music, no summons. No. I hear no music, no... <laughs> That's because you already have your gifts, Langowski, your special talents. You didn't need any more. I should be with her. Puck, regardez-la. A figure coming toward us. Heather? I don't mind telling you. This is all very, very wonderfully weird. Oh, dear, Eugene, you're smaller than me again. Seems... Like near everyone is, lass. My eyes, they're better too. I don't need my glasses. And what's your power, eh? I'm not sure, but I think to lead. To be Alpha Flight Canada's, the world's guardian, as my dear Mac tried so hard to be. Herr Professor, do you realize the implications this fantastic light has the capability of making everyone on Earth a superpowered being like us. Think of it. The mutants will no longer be outcasts. There'll be no more need to hate or be hated. Mm, so it would seem, Nightcrawler. The goal I've sought my entire adult life. Why, then, am I so suspicious? What will it take to put my doubts to rest? Just then... Without warning. Bosh, moi, Professor Xavier. What's happening to Shaman? Looks like there was an, a drawing error there. Yeah, exactly. It's that's supposed yeah. to be Colossus, Colossus, right? Yeah. Or it's just, you know, Lawful Langowski trying his best Russian. Russian. Yeah. Sure. The Sarsi Enchanter has no powers of his own. When in need, he reaches into his medicine bag. And the appropriate charm comes automatically to hand. The pouch is his gateway to the myriad realms and states of being. It somehow keeps them all contained, providing an orderly framework to a universe of transcend transcendent chaos. But now those barriers have been broken down. The madness is loose to consume both Shaman and his world. Unless his friends can save him. North Star, sorry, Aurora, North Star, take this as far from Shaman as you can, and hurry. But Anodyne, without it, what will become of Shaman? With it, cher sir, he is surely doomed. Jean-Paul, the creatures are following us. They're gaining on us. I was right not to trust this place. See, Jean-Louis, 
it can only bring misery. To me, brother, to Sasquatch, and Puck, and Heather, to Captain Pryor and her friends, a strange misery North Star that makes us all so happy. Explain this, then. I cannot. But surely, with all our powers, old and new, we can heal our friends and bring hope to the world. You dream, little sister. With all my heart, mon frère. Shaman, how is he? The creatures hurt him terribly, North Star. Try as I might, my healing talent has no effect on his wounds. Forgive me, Alpha Flight, but Michael, two young men, is dying. And with him, perhaps, a dream. Oh, to be concluded in X-Men and Alpha Flight number two on sale next month. That is crazy. What an issue. Jeez. Oh, wow. There is a lot there. So much there. Chuck is noting the fashion on Heather's outfit, her very high-waisted belt. David says, people in the Marvel Universe already draw a distinction between mutants and augmented humans. Everyone getting powers would probably result in mutants getting it even worse. Perhaps. Perhaps. Uh, crazy. That's a, yeah. a lot. That was a lot of comic. That was double the size of a regular comic we would read. Yeah. Thanks everyone for sticking around for that one. That's, uh, yeah, that it was, means that a lot. A one. It really was, and we were really glad you guys could stay with us the whole way. I mean, it's 48 pages, no ads. So usually we get a 22-page yeah. And ads. This was, yeah, 48 no ads either way. So that was a lot of comic. Prestige format, you know, uh, fancier paper, brighter colors, um, double the size, pretty incredible. <laughs> Barry says, good job, guys. And another Grammy for the Nightcrawler voice. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, can I do some toy shout outs? Some oh, yeah, let's do toy shout outs. Yeah. Uh, I, I was. I finally acquired Bone Breaker at the bath of the Reavers. I, uh, I'm almost finished my Reaver, Reavers collection. I have one more on its way shortly. Um, I won't say which one, but anyway, I'm just going to. How does, how does he there. poop? Um, right here. Right here? Nice. Good. Oh, it comes out there. <laughs> it does. That's the, that's the poop gate there. Um, you know, got uh, Banshee's daughter. Oh. Uh, Siren. Siren is that? Yeah, she's. I like that hair. That hair looks good. And uh, Cyclops and Havoc's mysterious other brother. What's Vulcan. his name? Vulcan. Right. Yeah, he's here in a Cockrum-inspired outfit. And another thing I got. Uh, I'm a big fan of the um, Marvel Marvel Legends 3.75. Five POA figures, you know, like five points of articulation, Kenner inspired, and uh, in this Hasbro Pulse exclusive package comes the last two figures that I did not have on awesome reflective metallic oh, Phoenix card. And the Wolverine, right? Marvel's Phoenix and and the Wolverine. Whoa, they're really, really beautiful. You got them all now. Uh, I got them all now. That's pretty wild. I'm so happy to have the entire uh, the yeah. entire series. With a couple of doubles, you know, I did some some customs or some mods on a couple of figures to I don't know add another paint bit on them. That's been a lot of fun. So that's pretty cool. I'm really happy to get those over the weekend at the at Toying Arounds Toy Con, first ever. Toying around with Toy Con. That was a, a lot of fun on sure was. on Sunday. And I had I had lunch with Kevin today to do an autopsy over how the uh, the event went from our point of view and just talk to him about how it was for him. It was really, really cool. And I also picked up this guy, not on the X-Men brand, but uh, just super awesome. Oh yeah. So yeah. happy to get yeah. Spider Man twenty ninety nine. Yeah, really. Fantastic, fantastic figure. Really striking. Um, it has been a long show. We should probably call it a night. It's a good idea. Group of Seven, Most Secret Tale, available on our website at uh, www.groupofsevencomics.ca. Of course, 
Seven is the number seven. You can find us on all the socials at Group of Seven Comics. You can find you, of course, at Chris Sanigan, at Jason Lapidus Art. Um, you can find us there. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, subscribe to the mailing list on our website. Click like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're 299 followers. Let's get to 300. We need one more, one more follower or subscriber, or whatever, on YouTube. That would be lovely to hit 300 for reasons. Um, but uh, we really enjoy doing this and sharing it with you, and hope you've had fun tonight too. Mm -hmm. We will be at, or at least I will be at Artsy Fartsy, which is a fun Comic Con um, in downtown Toronto, lovely downtown Toronto in the annex area of toronto at uh you know uh, blue and spadina on sunday april 21st at artsy fartsy so you should come on to that one it should be a joy <laughs> chuck says with god as my witness jason i thought turkeys could fly beautiful some less nesman just <laughs> one of the best thanksgiving jokes of all time it was such a great such a great way to grow up with that tv show wkrp in cincinnati um what else do we need to plug here chris uh and then the week after uh april 27th uh, i'm going to be maybe even jason we're going to be at the halton hills fan fest in georgetown ontario at their local library um, bringing bringing the comic goodness to to the library and library shows are always a lot of fun and always drag yeah and we're drinking more cognac as well uh I'm going to also take a shout out. We got a few more subscribers. So I'll say, hey, shout outs to Obi Wan Kenobi, B. Krugel, and Garth S. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Much appreciated. Cheers. Of course, next week we'll be back with issue two. Oh, yeah. It's probably part two. Yeah, that's smart. X Men and Alpha Flight. And we'll be reviewing episode five of x men 97 which drops in about four hours i'll be catching that tomorrow morning yeah, i'm gonna wake up with 100 yeah, my most lovely daughter i can't wait to walk watch that one with her before <laughs> heading off to school yeah um anything else you want to throw in just such a lively chat tonight thank you so much for participating it's a lot it's a ton of fun when the chat is lively it, it's always fun but it adds a real extra element and people even chatting amongst themselves so thank you so much thanks for joining us our pleasure. We're really happy to have you guys here. So yeah. I can't wait to see you again next week as we hit episode, yes, as Ali says, 117. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all then. And thank you for hanging out with us tonight. And until next time. Stay what is exy. It, Stay exy. There you Stay go. Stay exy. Take care, everyone. Have a good night. See you later, bub. <laughs> <laughs>